Why do you need a just culture? You want people to tell you about safety and other problems that happen at work, incidents that happen. But for people to do that, they have to feel reasonably secure that their reports will be treated fairly, that there will be no disproportionate consequences if they report. The dilemma, of course, is that there will be cases where you feel you have to demand accountability for certain actions or events, even if it may dampen other people's willingness to share similar stories in the future. That's where a just culture comes in, to balance accountability with learning and to change the way in which we think about accountability so that it becomes compatible with learning. Now, you're wrong if you think you can have a just culture simply by saying, we'll treat your reporting fairly unless we find evidence of gross negligence or willful violations or egregious conduct. That still leaves people in complete uncertainty because we have no clear definitions for any of those categories. Whether something is seen as negligence, which, by the way, is a legal term and not a human performance one, depends on standards of good practice, on definitions of skillful, on definitions of reasonable care, of foreseeability of harm, of prudence. These are all judgment calls that somebody will have to make. So the real question is, who do you give the power to make that judgment? Who gets to make that judgment? Who gets to draw that line? Our concern with the just culture today is increasing because more people seem to draw that line, managers, judges, who have limited knowledge of the messy details of what it means to practice in an operational world. So how can you build a just culture? First, don't get trapped in the illusion of a clear line between what is acceptable behavior and what is not. Instead, go figure out who gets to draw that line in your organization, in your profession, in your society. And if you don't like what you find, enter into discussions at any political level necessary to change it. Second, assess the way in which you deal with incidents at home. Make sure people don't get stigmatized, offer them appropriate peer support, and certainly don't make them pay penalties. Three, See if you can get an independent safety staff that deals with your incident reports so that people's reports don't have to go through their immediate boss, because that can be a sure way to inhibit openness. Four, even though you have to accept legitimate demands from society for access to what's going on in your organization, see how you can protect your safety data from undue outside probing. Five, Make sure your people know their rights and duties after an incident. What to expect, who to talk to, who not to talk to. In other words, reduce the anxiety about who gets to draw the line on their behavior. None of this is about escaping accountability. In fact, it is about increasing accountability, increasing the number and richness of accounts of stories that people tell from which your organization can learn and improve.